For more insight into Zimbabwe's latest troubles and the South African Southern Africa economy as a whole, I spoke to academic and author Dale McKinley. He's based in Johannesburg. I asked him what life is like for everyday Zimbabweans. Structurally, there is over almost 90% of the population does not have formal employment. So the informal economy is uh, dominant. That means most people are simply just trying to get by. They're selling goods on the street. They're hustling. Uh, the the cross-border trade with, for example, where I live here in Johannesburg in South Africa is uh, huge. And without that, I think it would, the economic situation would be worse. In fact, from the statistics that I have uh, been able to access, I would say over 50% of the Zimbabwean population internally is relying on remunerations from relatives or friends that are overseas or in other countries. So fundamentally, the daily life of Zimbabwean is simply one of survival, of getting by, as the Zimbabweans say. And uh, it is, there is manufacturing, uh, the mining sector, the fundamental sort of the, the, the heavy industry sector are all very, very depressed in Zimbabwe. And uh, there's not a great deal of new investment in the country. Uh, you do have some in the tourism sector, but fundamentally the economy is sick and it needs, uh, it needs serious, serious attention. So for your average Zimbabwean, it's, uh, there's not really many, uh, it's not much further to go down. Now we're, situ we're having a situation where, as I mentioned, almost five million Zimbabweans are estimated by the United Nations to be in need of food aid for this year. That is a combination of misgovernance as well as some drought and some bad weather patterns and climate change, but nonetheless, the situation is dire for most Zimbabweans. There are U.S. sanctions in place that affects Zimbabwe's ability to deal with the World Bank and IMF. Is that pushing the country into the arms of, let's say, China? I know that Beijing is in talks with Harare about financing a, a water system project. Well, I think as, as one, uh, any observer of Zimbabwe know, knows that uh, over a decade ago, if not more, uh, Mugabe began to his turn to the East policy. Uh, he claimed as, at, at that point that the United States and Western countries, the United Kingdom and others, were basically isolating Zimbabwe through their sanctions and other measures. And so he was looking. So if you noticed, you know, Mugabe basically went uh, regularly, not only to China, but to Malaysia, to Indonesia, to other Southeast Asian countries, looking for aid, looking for trade deals. And Mungagua is basically trying to do the same thing, I believe. But China and many other countries, uh, I think their patience is running thin. Because if you're going to invest in a country, whether it's Zimbabwe or anywhere else, then you want to see a return. You want to see some kind of proper governance. You want to see some stability. If that is not forthcoming, then you're going to basically close off those taps, or at least they're not going to be open as they used to be. And I think that's the fundamental uh, challenge in the Zimbabwean situation, is it's not only the West. Yes, the sanctions are having some impact, but mostly, I would say, on the elite and the, and the people in the ruling parties, not on necessarily ordinary Zimbabweans. The fundamental problem with Zimbabwe is a governance and a political problem. If they can sort that out, then they can begin to trade with whomever they want. How have Zimbabwe's economic challenges affected the rest of Southern Africa? The challenges in Zimbabwe, the economic challenges, have fundamentally affected Sub-Saharan Africa in particular, Southern Africa even more especially. Uh, here in South Africa, where I reside, uh, you have a, a crisis of immigration, essentially of migration, of people coming here simply because they cannot get jobs, they cannot uh, survive, and they're coming here to find work. That is putting huge pressure on uh, South Africa's already fairly stretched resources, social services and other kinds of things, and it's causing a lot of resentment amongst many of the poor in South Africa. So as I think many people have seen over the last several years in many instances, there's been an outbreak of xenophobic violence. Zimbabweans and others have been targeted, and, and people, some of the people here are asking why that they're allowed to be come, come into the country. I, I believe that that is the wrong question to ask. The question to ask is why is Zimbabwe still in the crisis it's in? But also economically it's affected other countries. Uh, Zimbabwe used to be the leading trading partner uh, of South Africa and Botswana and many other sub-Saharan African countries. And because of the tailspin of its economy, those, that, those trade figures have just basically gone through the floor. Uh, so Zimbabwe's exports uh, and, and imports have, have basically uh, drastically been reduced, and that has fundamentally affected the bottom line of many not private companies, but also state-owned enterprises and others who would invest. So yes, the fallout from the Zimbabwean crisis 
has not been a explosion, but it's certainly been a gradual, I think, decline in the economic welfare of other countries because Zimbabwe used to be the breadbasket of Southern Africa and was a fairly wealthy uh, country that traded uh, with other Southern African countries. Tanzania has managed to hit its target rates. Is there a lesson there for other countries? Well, I think it's a question of what it is you're, you're dealing in and, and trading in. As far as uh, Tanzania is concerned, I think you know, it's, it's fairly minor relative to what, for example, the South African uh, retail and manufacturing and mining sector. So there are certain sectors in the Zimbabwean economy that could be targeted. Uh, as I said, tourism sector, there's a degree of the mining sector, there's some uh, small-scale manufacturing and trading in agricultural products and other things, and Tanzania has obviously tapped into that. But fundamentally, uh, I don't think that's going to really work for the rest of the other African countries until the political and governance crisis is solved in Zimbabwe.